Hi ladies and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you guys are here. If you are new around here, my name is Nikki. I am a 30 year homeschooling mom to five little boys. And today's video is really just me sitting down to have a chat. I have like a, several things that I wanted to talk about, but not one thing in particular to constitute like an entire video. So I'm like, I'm just gonna have like a relax, like sit down chat with you guys because there's a lot of things that I want your feedback on. So I have my coffee and this like adorable little mug that my friend gave me our during like the first year that I homeschooled. Um, I have my coffee and I'm ready to chat with y'all. All right, so first things first, because we are entering Holy Week. If you are a Christian, this is a really big week for us as believers. And um, I think I, I may still do a video on this just to help other Christian homeschool moms like for next year. I wish that I had known about this study ahead of time to share it with you, but I found out about it kind of last minute. But I wanted to share the Easter unit that we have been doing for the last couple of weeks. This is our last week that we're doing this upcoming week. And I wanted to share it because it has been a true blessing. There are lots of Easter unit studies out there, lots of like Easter resources available. And I came across this unit study on Instagram and it has blown me away. I absolutely love it. My kids love it. It has just been a blessing. And I always like to preface this information with a reminder of my kids like their ages because I think that in my experience it has been it's hard to find things for little ones that are like meaty enough where they can like really get something out of it but also something that toddlers can do as well as like my elementary age kids can do and this has been just so, so wonderful. So it is a unit study. I'm not, I, I guess I shouldn't call it a unit study. It's an Easter study and it is called An Expectant Easter. It is a curriculum written by Treehouse Schoolhouse. I will link her Instagram and her website down below. And if you're doing this, or if you have known about it, if you did it last year, I think last year was when she first released it. Um, but if you know about this, you know how wonderful it is. And wow, I have just really, really loved it. Uh, the, the basic premise of the whole curriculum is every day there is a scripture reading, an egg hunt that kind of goes along with the scripture. Um, they do a narration of the scripture reading that day. Uh, like it's a narration and a picture drawing. So like I have like my um, four and six year old just draw pictures of the narration and I will help my six year old sometimes like narrate what he, you know, what the scripture was, you know, and then my seven year old is able to do both pieces. And um, after we do that, um, there is a, there is a hymn study, there is an art study. Um, and then every day there include, there's also a poem study and a connection point. So all of these things are for each day. Now we don't do them each day the way that it is written out, which is what I like. This is what I like the most about this is that I have been able to take her lesson plans and really fit it to how what we are able to do in a day and tweak it to what we need and what we can do and what I'm able to do right now. Um, the scripture reading, the egg hunt, and the narration have been 
the like the pieces that we have done every single day the connection moments it, it it will either be like a craft, um, baking something, going outside on like a scavenger hunt, things like that. And they are all great things. We haven't done all of them simply because of scheduling, um, just not being able to do it because I have a lot of kids and I'm just not able to do it right now. Um, so we have definitely like tailored it to our needs, but it has been just absolutely wonderful. So that is what we have been doing and I saw on um, the, what I, I'm not sure what her name is, I can't remember what her name is, the woman who wrote the curriculum, um, but she is the, the owner of Treehouse Schoolhouse. Um, she was answering some questions about the curriculum and one of the things that she had answered was how do you do all of that on top of your regular curriculum and her answer has also been my answer so we have pretty much put a hold on morning basket for right now for these last couple of weeks we haven't done morning basket this is what we have been doing in lieu of our morning time and there were some days where we just didn't get to our daily curriculum work and for us right now that's okay like this is more important for our family it is more important that they are you know learning this story about Jesus and that we're talking about him and making it important that is the focus of our day and anything else that happens outside of that is just extra and it's a bonus if we get to it that's great and if we don't that's okay we will get back to it um, you know within the next couple weeks and it'll still be there when we're done but right now we are like solely focusing on our Easter study and everything else is extra and that's pretty much what she had said the same thing her family you know really focuses on this time and making that the focal point instead of you know all of the traditional stuff all of the traditional curriculum that you know their day-to-day -day stuff so that is how we're fitting it in that is our priority every single day everything else is extra what are we putting in our easter baskets this year so this year is the first year that i was like a little stumped i really wasn't sure what to put in their easter baskets but I wanted to share with you what I did finally land on. So first things first, one, we don't do the Easter Bunny, and that's maybe an unpopular opinion, but we just don't. Um, we've never really felt the need to do, to like to talk about the Easter Bunny or say that their Easter baskets are from the Easter Bunny. I grew up as a kid having my Easter baskets from the Easter Bunny and it didn't really matter. I didn't really care. Um, so my husband and I have always just kind of been on the same page about just not really messing around with the Easter Bunny, especially because we focus so much on the resurrection. And that is what we want our kids to know that Easter is about. Like it is about Jesus 100%. So um, Easter baskets in our house are relatively small um we have in the past done like little gifts like maybe a little lego set or um some coloring kits or art or things like that and so this year um we decided to do bibles and so we have the jesus storybook bible and if you don't know what that is it is an excellent excellent children's bible like if you are reading i would say like all the way up until i mean even early early elementary i mean we still read it like we will continue to read it honestly um even though my older boys they know they are first and second grade right now it still is definitely suitable for them um, but the jesus storybook bible is the best first bible I will recommend it over and over again. I will link that down below if you want to check that one out. Um, it was gifted to us um, from our former church when our kids would move into like the elementary age class. 
they would get this Jesus Storybook Bible. And so we have a couple copies of it and it's wonderful. I highly recommend. But my older boys are um, able, they're able to read now. And my oldest son specifically has been wanting to read the Bible more on his own. And this has been specifically brought up in our morning time because we read a Proverbs a day and he wanted to read it out of his own Bible. But he's like, my Bible doesn't have it like this. So the newer church that we have been attending gave him a New Testament Bible, but it doesn't have Proverbs in it. And so I'm like, okay, this is a great time to gift him a Bible that he can join in and participate and read our Proverbs a day. So these are the Bibles that we got my oldest two sons. So we got them the Adventure Bible and this I have seen recommended for beginning readers, beginner readers, as a first Bible when they're starting to read on their own. And I like flipped through it. So we got the the NIV version and you can find these on Amazon. I will link the two that we got. So I, this was for one of my sons. My other son got like a different cover. Um, but if you just do a like a quick flip through, it's just, it's, it's perfect. Like it, it's a really good first Bible for them. And um, I know they're going to be really excited to have this and to be able to open their own Bible in the morning when we are doing our morning time and to read along with me as I'm reading and then they will be able to help to read as well. So this is what we got for my two oldest sons and again so they are six and seven years old. This is what they will be getting in their basket. So my four-year-old, he will be getting the Tiny Truths Bible. So I found this one on Amazon too, and it came highly reviewed and recommended. And just a little quick flip through of this one. There's a page. It's very colorful and, you know, kid-friendly. I have to say that what I love the most is that everyone is brown. Like, this is accurate. This is accurate and I love this so much. I'm really excited to read through this with him. And um, again, this one came highly recommended. I think that Tori from the Oglesby Ohana, I feel like she has shared this one before too. Maybe, maybe that's where I first heard of it. But when I found it on Amazon, I knew that I had heard of it before. And then after reading through it, reading through the reviews, I'm like, yeah, this is it. And it is just as cute in person. And then for my toddler, I got him this little ready, set, find Easter. And, you know, cause he does not, we have the children, the Jesus storybook Bible for him. So um, like I said, we will continue to use that. Um, you know, through the years because I, it's suitable for all of elementary age. This is just a cute little um, find, hunt and find book that also goes through the Easter story. So he will be getting that in his Easter basket. And then we also do just a little bit of candy, not a whole lot. Um, a little candy, they always get like chalk and bubbles. And then uh, we try to throw in something for summer. This year they are getting um, some of these. Um, the, they're like the the balloon things that like the water balloons that you stick on the end of your hose and they blow up. I found them on like a killer Amazon deal. I'm going to link the ones below that I got. Um, I did not pay that much for them. I got them for like 75% off and I bought them I think in December for their Easter basket but I, we would, I knew that we would use them. Um, so we got those and still deciding if we're going to get them anything else. My uh, two youngest sons don't have bikes and I'm like maybe this is a good opportunity to get them a bike. I don't know but then we have would have to think about what are we going to get the older two. They already have bikes. The last thing that I wanted to talk about regarding Easter is 
this really fun Easter scavenger hunt that we do on Easter morning for their baskets. Now, I say it was super fun. Last year was a hot mess. <laughs> so I'm going to link this down below too. Lots of links for you guys today. It is a free printable for a, a scavenger hunt. It goes through the Easter story in a scavenger hunt way and it ultimately leads to where their Easter baskets are. It is really fun and last year started out really fun but you know my sons are very competitive so instead of it being a cooperative effort to find the Easter baskets it ended in a brawl. Uh, so we'll see how this year goes. I shared about it last year on my Instagram and several people used it and they, and their kids loved it. So I'm going to link that and check it out. Let me know if you end up using it and how your kids like it. It's just a fun little way to add a little bit extra fun into your Easter morning. Okay. So the another thing I wanted to share today was a couple of supplemental resources that we use in our homeschool. I need a drink. So the first one is a free resource. Lego magazine. If you have, I mean, I feel like any, most kids nowadays play with Legos. Um, I feel like we, we like to say it's only boys. No, girls and boys alike all love Legos. This is a free, free magazine. If you don't know about this, you need to sign up. I will link below uh, where you can go and sign up for this. It is, I, I compare this to a Lego version of like the Highlights magazine. There's like lots of, like I'm gonna find a, let me see. Like there's usually a comic of some sort in it. There's usually like puzzles and games that they can play. There's riddles and trivia. There's always a, um, like a little build, you know, it shows them like how to build something different with the Legos that they already have. It is a super cute, fun little thing that they get in the mail and it comes bi-monthly. And again, it is free and you, you just can't beat this, like this quality of a magazine for free and kids love getting stuff in the mail because I feel like we don't get many things in the mail anymore so my boys absolutely love this Lego Life magazine and I tell everybody about it because it's great. So we are you know in that time of year where all of the homeschoolers are talking about next school year and curriculum and like starting to plan for next year and I'm gonna be honest I haven't even started doing that yet um no I need to get through this school year first like I talked about this a little bit in my video you know homeschooling during a pandemic and all I have to say is we're just trying to make it to the end of this year. I have thought about a little bit of what we're going to do for next year. And honestly, I'm not sure a whole lot will change for us. I will update here. I will do a video on the curriculum that we do choose for next year or that I do choose for next year. I think a lot will probably stay the same. There are some things that I'm researching right now um, and trying to decide what to do for the extras. So all of our core curriculum will likely stay the same, more than likely. I don't anticipate any changes there. But I am doing some research, I'm starting to, and when I say doing research, I mean that very loosely. Like, I will occasionally think about, oh, hmm, what are we gonna do for like history? Um, what are we gonna do for science next year? Are we gonna do unit studies? I don't know. Um, I haven't done a whole lot. I mean, I've thought about it a little bit, 
but I'm really just focusing on getting us to the end of the school year right now. Um, I know that like this is the time when a lot of homeschoolers start to plan for next year and I'm just not ready yet. I'm just not. I mean, I, I think part of that is simply because, like I said, most of our curriculum is going to stay the same. We will just move to the next level. But I do have to start thinking about some more of those extras because next year I will have a third grader and a second grader. And I really need to make sure that we are doing more regular science and history, geography, those things. I did have a thought that I think next year we may do a unit study on our state. I think I might do that, but again, I don't really know. I don't know. And when I figure that out, I will share that with you, but I don't know that yet. And lastly, spring break. Do y'all do, do spring break? Like, do, do you give your kids a spring break? We don't. I don't do that. Um, for no real reason. There is no real reason why we don't do spring break. We just don't. Um, I know that I loved spring break as a kid and going to public school. I always looked forward to spring break. Um, but for us, We've never, I've never given my kids like a homeschool spring break. Do you do that? I'd, I'd really love to know. Like if you got, if you do spring break in your homeschool, please let me know. And I'd like to know like, like why do you do spring break? What do you do for spring break? Maybe you travel. That's because if you are like me and live in a very cold state, this is the time where we're like, we're all done now. I need to see the sun. I'd love to know. We don't um, do spring break. The last couple of years, we've not been able to travel because for various reasons. Um, we're always having babies and always having, my husband's always having to use his vacation time for that. Um, we are traveling, but it won't be until the end of May. And so for us, we are trying to be done with school before we go on our vacation at the end of May. So that is our goal. Like we have two months left. What? Like that's crazy. Like that we will have already, like we're almost done with the school year. We are mostly done. It's wild to me. Um, but we don't do spring break. And I think another part of that for me is I am all, I'm of the mindset, especially because we, we haven't, traveled during this time of year like to to use that time as a vacation and so my mindset is well we're home anyway we might as well just do it and then be done earlier like be if we can do more now and that's just be done earlier at the end of the year I would rather do that I would rather have an extra week in June than a week in March in Michigan. Yeah, that's my thought process behind that. That's why we don't do a spring break. Now that may change in time, like next year or the years following, we may take an earlier uh, vacation. Like this year it just worked out where we're going at the end. Yeah, no, we don't, we don't do that. So if you do that, let me know because that's really interesting to me. But again, if you're traveling, that makes sense. That is all that I have for today. All of the random things that I had to talk about. Um, thank you so much for being here with me. I really, really appreciate you. And if you enjoyed like these like sit down, like chatty videos, let me know down below. Give this video a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one. The world could fall down